This is Ritesh Srinivasan and welcome to my channel. Yesterday Meta AI had this interesting exciting news. So they announced LLAMA which is a foundational 65 billion parameter large language model. Now what is special about this 65 billion parameter large language model? Let's go to the paper. So what they say is that the 13 billion parameter uh, model of LLAMA outperforms GPT-3 175 billion on most benchmarks, which is very uh, nice. And then the LLAMA 65 billion parameter model is competitive with best models like Chinchilla 70 billion and Palm 540 billion. So these smaller models are performing at a level which is competitive with these large 540 billion parameters models. So this is always good, right? Okay. So what they say is that the focus of this work is to train a series of large language models that achieve the best possible performance at various inference budgets by training on more tokens than what is typically used. Okay. Because here, uh, the token size which they have used over here is close to 1.4 trillion tokens. Okay. Um, so here they have the uh, token uh, details. Basically, this is the model architecture details. So here if you see um, the 6.7 billion uh, parameters or 7 billion parameter models, the token size is 1 trillion. Whereas 65.2 and 35. Uh, 32.5 billion parameter models are 1.4 trillion tokens. Okay. So the entire training data set contains roughly 1.4 trillion tokens after tokenization. Right. And uh, for tokenizer, they used the byte pair encoding algorithm and they used an implementation from sentence piece. Now their data set mix consists of these publicly available data sets. And on the Wikipedia data set, they also considered 20 languages. Okay, so this is also a multilingual model. And this is the kind of mix of the data set. Okay, the sampling proportion from each of these data sets. But the data set details are given over here. I'll not cover that. Okay, so what they are saying is that uh, unlike other models like Chinchilla, Palm, or GPT 3, they use only publicly available data, making this work compatible with open sourcing. Okay. So that is what they are saying over here. And they also say uh, they, that the LLAMA 13 million parameter outperforms GPT-3 on most benchmarks despite being 10x smaller. So they believe that this model will help democratize the access and study of large language models since it can be run on a single GPU, the 13 billion parameter model. Okay. At the higher end of the scale, the 65 billion parameter model is also competitive with bigger models like Palm 540B. Okay, 540 billion parameters. Okay, so this was about the data set which I told, uh, you know, how uh, they have taken what proportion from each data set and further details are present over here. I'll not go into it. This was about tokenization and these are the various uh, hyperparameters of the model. They also have a model card which details this over here. Okay, then let's go to the implementation. So for implementation, what they are saying is that they have leveraged various improvements that were proposed in models like Palm. Okay, so they do something uh, specifically like in from GPT-3, uh, they took this pre-normalization concept. Uh, from Palm, they took this SWE GLU activation function. And from GPT-NEO, they took this rotary embeddings. Now, uh, for each one of this, you need to refer to these particular papers to understand more about, you know, what are these techniques. Okay. And uh, what they claim is that they did some efficient implementation by uh, using an uh, efficient implementation of the causal multi-head attention operator for training. Okay. They also did uh, some other efficient implementations over here. They have given the details. I'm not talking about that over here. You can read the paper. But uh, this is interesting. What they're saying is that when training the 65 billion parameter model, their code processes around 380 tokens per second per GPU on 2048 800 GPU with 80 GB of RAM. 
so and this means that it took them around 21 days to tra train on 1.4 trillion tokens this is really huge okay the amount of uh, gpus required which is close to 2k 2048 800 gpu with 80 gb ram of each that's the kind of infrastructure needed to train these large language models okay and what is the effect of training on uh, so much number of gpus if you go over here they have actually put the carbon footprint of this particular models okay so what they are saying is that they used 2048 a180 gpu basically 80 gp gpus for approximately five months to develop the models this means that developing these models would have cost around 2638 megawatt hour under our assumptions that is the power consumption and a total emission of 1015 tco2 equivalent so i did not know what was tco2 equivalent so i searched for that and it says total it stands for tons of carbon dioxide equivalent it's a standard unit for counting greenhouse gas emissions regardless of whether they are from carbon dioxide or any other gas so this is the kind of uh, carbon dioxide emissions or greenhouse emissions for just training large language models is really huge okay so yeah this is mind boggling actually in the numbers over here this is not just the case with say opt uh, like uh, say uh, llama but even say previously or opt also they assume training on 34 days on this 992 a180 gp models so the kind of cost involved in training these large language models is really huge in terms of emission as well as in terms of power consumption okay so uh, what they say is that we hope that releasing these models will help to reduce future carbon emissions since the training is already done and only fine tuning needs to be done and the smaller model can be run on single gpu but this is the kind of uh, the cost involved in training large language models and this is out of bounds for say a universities or something this can be only done at huge companies like meta ai or open ai or say you are google right so so that was about the carbon footprint so i just uh, looked at from the training point of view uh, from this basically right and then now let's look at uh, so where was that that's that was from here okay the training section now uh, let's look at some of the main results okay so what they said is that uh, they have evaluated on common sense reasoning on eight standard uh, common sense reasoning benchmarks so they have uh, named the benchmarks over here and these benchmarks include data sets with uh, say close style and window grade style tasks as well as multiple choice question answering so what they say is that this 65 billion parameter uh, llama outperforms chinchilla 70 billion parameter on uh, all reported benchmarks except for one similarly this model surpasses palm 540 billion on certain uh, on almost all benchmarks except for these two bull q and window grade model okay the 13 billion parameter rainia outperforms gpt3 despite being 10x smaller so that is what is this table summarizing okay so this 13 billion parameter model it outperforms your gpt3 on all tasks literally right and the 65 billion parameter model is competitive with palm this is on common sense reasoning tasks okay then they did a uh, closed book question answering okay uh, so here they say that again the 13 billion parameter is competitive on these benchmarks with gpt3 and chinchilla despite being 5 to 10x smaller and this 13 billion parameter can run on a single v100 gpu during inference okay so this was on closed book question answering similarly on other tasks like uh, reading comprehension uh, it does better than say uh, palm or almost competitive with palm so this is 68.1 this is 67.9 uh, but this is at say one tenth parameters one ninth parameters of palm right so then they tried it on other things like uh, mathematical reasoning on code generation uh, so yeah they also did it on the massive multitask language understanding data set where you have consists of multiple choice questions covering various domains of knowledge including humanities stem and social sciences 
so here also it does uh, what they say is that on this benchmark 65 billion is behind both chinchilla and firm by a few percent in average across most domains okay uh, so another thing is that during training they track the performance of the model on few question answering in common uh, the most benchmark the performance improves steadily and correlates with training perplexity of the model so basically as the model size increases the performance also increases okay except for some benchmarks otherwise uh, that is consistently seen over here okay then there is this discussion about bias and uh, toxicity in this particular model i will not be covering that probably you can read this paper okay so this is quite an exciting work okay except that there are discussions around say the license of this particular models so there is this reddit where people explain that it is not purely open source as such and it is currently available only for academic researchers the model weights okay so what i understand is that uh, the particular weights of the model there are some terms around uh, you know uh, the license where people have said over here is that um, the particular you know open source doesn't mean free for commercial use okay um so there is this thing the code is gpl v3 so you can use that for commercial uh, use as long as you inherit the license the weights are specifically under a non-commercial license okay currently it will be shared only with research uh, institutions that is what is the understanding is so it is a little bit confusing in terms of whether these models can be used for commercial purposes or not um so it's not very clear so what it says is that license is non-commercial bespoke license and uh, it will be available for uh, you know the weights will be available for academic usage but if i understand from these links i think the weights are not yet uh, you know it's only open to researchers and uh, yeah the weights are not yet available or something is what was mentioned so probably only after the agreement is signed or something the weights will be released okay but this is an interesting development uh, in the sense that smaller models are performing equivalent to GPT-3. Okay, so the techniques used in this particular paper can also be applied. Uh, you know, if you are to develop your own models, to develop smaller models which can perform as good as larger models. The idea is to move to smaller models. It improves computational efficiencies as well as you know, uh, you know the cost of uh, the carbon footprint of developing these models becomes much lesser compared to those larger language models. So this was a short video on uh, LLAMA from Meta AI. I hope you like this video. If you like the video, please like, share, subscribe to the channel. I'll be putting the link to this blog as well as the model card, the paper, the Reddit discussion. Okay, so you can check that out. See you in another video.